All right, so this is a video on the King LT Airway. Uh, comes in three different sizes, size three, size four, and size five. It's designed to fit patients four foot to seven foot in height. The three is yellow, the four is red, and the five is purple. You'll see here on the uh, chest of the mannequin, I've actually opened the kit for King Airway, but it comes with everything you need to uh, properly get it ready and insert it. You'll see it comes with an instruction card should you need it. You'll see that it comes with the actual King LT Airway. It comes with a 60cc syringe and it also comes with a packet of water-based lubricant. Uh, for this particular one we won't be using a water-based lubricant. Uh, we found that if we use it on the mannequins uh, it actually gums up the inside of the mannequin. Uh, so for sizing, size 3 will fit patients 4 foot to 5 foot. Size 4 will fit patients 5 foot to 6 foot, and size 5 will fit patients 6 foot to 7 foot. Anybody over 7 foot, it's contraindicated on as the tube won't be long enough to properly ventilate the patient, and anybody under 4 foot, it's contraindicated in because the tubes will be too long to properly ventilate the patient. So we're going to use this if we have a patient that is unresponsive without a gag reflex that's unable to maintain their own airway. Uh, this may be used after uh, a NPA or an OPA has been unsuccessful or if you've gotten to a point in a call where you're able to use a more advanced airway such as the King LT airway. Uh, so when you take it out of the packaging uh, you'll take out all components you want to make sure to lube it up before you actually insert it into the patient's airway. Uh, I'll do that just in a minute. First before you do anything you want to make sure that the device actually works when you take it out of the packaging. Uh, so on the side of the tube, it tells you exactly how much air, uh, a range of air that you need to use to make sure the tube is properly inflated, uh, the, the balloons that will inflate when you insert the air. So this one says that we need between 45 and 60 milliliters of air. So I'm going to draw back on the syringe to 60 milliliters of air, and I'm going to test this to make sure that it actually inflates as necessary before I go to attempt to insert it into the patient's airway. So you can see here that both balloons are inflated. Uh, the distal balloon uh, and also this balloon here. Uh, doesn't appear to be any air leaking out. They seem to be holding the air fine. Uh, so I'll go ahead and deflate it. I know that my device works and I'll work on inserting it. All right, so I'm going to spray it with some spray real quick before I insert the King Airway. Alright, so in this particular case, you want to start inserting the king airway uh, with the blue line towards the cheek. And you can pull down on the lip a little bit if you need to, to give you a little bit extra space and give you a little bit of more visualization of the airway. You can also grab onto the bony prominence of the chin. Again, be careful, just like with a head tilt chin lift or anything where you're manipulating the chin, make sure that you're not pushing on the soft tissue because you may end up pushing the tongue and soft tissue up, occluding the airway. So as you insert it, you'll start to rotate it down into place and you want the blue line here now toward pointing towards the chin. So when we insert this we're going to insert it so that the colored uh, adapter tip is actually flush with the teeth uh, and the, uh, the lips. Make sure that your pilot balloon is still out so that you can inflate it. So it's in place. Now we want to make sure that we inflate it and that it seats properly. So again we want to use between 45 and 60 milliliters of air. So I'm going to connect the pilot balloon. I'm going to put 60 milliliters of air. You may notice that the King Airway self-adjusts a little bit as you're putting air into it. Uh, it's just designed to seat itself. The distal tip uh, where you saw that small balloon is actually designed to go in the esophagus. Uh, so as the smaller balloon inflates and the bigger balloon inflates, it's creating a seal in the airway. And I'll show you here on a cutaway in just a minute. Uh, always make sure after you inflate it, remove the syringe from the pilot balloon or else the air will come back out. But you see that this is pretty secure uh, and this, this tip will accept any bag valve mask um, to be able to ventilate your patient. So I'm going to deflate the, uh, the balloon here and I will show you on the cutaway of the airway how it actually seats in the airway so that it's effective.
All right, so this is the cutout of the airway. Uh, so I'm going to show you how it actually uh, seats in the airway so you can see how it actually works. Uh, so here uh, you've got the trachea, and back here is the simulated esophagus. So again, the distal tip is designed, once you put it in the airway, to go into the esophagus. And we're going to apply a little bit of pressure because this is a uh, little bit of a tight fit here. Uh, so you can see that roughly the connector is at the teeth line or the lips and you can see where it's seated so you can't see that small balloon anymore but you can see the bigger balloon and I'm gonna go ahead and inflate it here so you can see what it looks like once it's fully inflated and again this may move a little bit once I inflate it as it's trying to get in the proper position alright so I put 60 cc's of air in it and you can see how that balloon inflates um, above the uh, smaller balloon and basically where the tracheal opening and esophageal opening are. So what it's, gonna, what it's designed to do, and you can see that it's covering the top part of the trachea as well, but it's designed to force air just below that balloon into the trachea so that we get ventilation with that. One thing with this too is you can also use a soft suction catheter to suction down this um, if you need to suction your patient as well. Uh, and one last thing is that you cannot use these on anybody under the age of 16. They're contraindicated for uh, anybody that under the age of 16.